Hi, my name is Jonas Scherland and I'm a PhD student at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, where I work with my supervisors Kasper Hornbeck and Joanna Bergström. Today, I'm very excited to be here and present our work, Ninja Hands, using many hands to improve target selection in virtual reality. The motivation behind Ninja Hands started out with frustration that it's difficult to select distant objects in virtual reality, especially if you want to retain the hand metaphor with a virtual hand that matches the movements of the user's physical hand. One way this has been done is by increasing the movement gain of the virtual hand so that it can reach distant objects, such as with the go-go technique. But then there are issues with precision as you have to map the user's physical reach to a much larger virtual space. We thought that a way of addressing this issue could be to add more hands to the equation so that this gain can be minimal even at far distances. A similar concept was shown to work for large 2D displays in Ninja cursors, where a single mouse was mapped to many cursors for improved target selection. This leads us to Ninja Hands, which maps the movement of a single physical hand to many virtual hands. The key benefit of Ninja Hands is that by adding more distributed hands to an environment, we reduce the shortest distance from a hand to any given point in the environment, meaning that the user has to move less to reach there. Ideally, this should result in faster selection times and less physical motion. There are three main parameters that can be manipulated towards this effect. One is the number and arrangement of the hands. Two is the mapping function or the gain between the physical hand and the virtual hands. And three is the disambiguation method used to resolve multiple hands touching objects at the same time. We evaluate Ninja Hands by instantiating it in two target selection studies to determine its effects on performance and user experience. Both studies feature even distributions of hands and a fixed gain. For disambiguation, we use a similar first-in, first-out queue as introduced in Ninja Cursors, where if multiple hands touch a target, only the first hand to touch a target is active and the others are added to a queue, becoming active one at a time whenever the active hand stops colliding with its target. So in the first study, we compare a single hand against a grid of four and a cube of eight hands in a target selection task. The hands are evenly distributed in a space in front of the user and the targets are eight spheres in the same space as the hands. The rest of the space is populated with distractors with a minimum distance between them using Poisson disk sampling. We evaluate both a high and a low density of distractors defined by the minimum distance between them as seen in the high density to the left and the low density to the right in this figure. Uh, as we can see here, participants were significantly faster in selection time with more hands, both in low and high densities of distractors. And similarly, participants move significantly less with more hands in low and high densities, moving more than twice as little with eight hands as with one. So, I mean, that's, that's amazing, right? Uh, it, it shows that in a small controlled environment, we can achieve a significant benefit with ninja hands. However, does this benefit scale to larger environments and more hands? We investigate this in the second study by expanding the target selection task to the entirety of the virtual room, um, which is a 10 by 5 by 10 meter environment as seen in the, the figure here. The red circle on the floor at the back is the user's location. And as in the first study, distractors are generated and placed using Poison disk sampling. We also significantly increase the number of hands comparing one, eight, 27 and 64 evenly distributed hands. In the second study, participants were not overall significantly faster with more hands. However, we can isolate the participants' decision-making time by measuring how long it takes until they start moving in each trial. The decision-making time is significantly higher with more hands, and the time spent moving is significantly lower. Uh, and as in the first study, participants also move significantly less with more hands. We introduce the uh, concept of having many virtual hands mapped to a physical hand and show that it works in certain conditions and has some uh, benefits for interaction even. The universal reduction in physical motion exerted could be useful in situations where it might be more important to reduce the physical motion exerted than to be as fast as possible. So for example, this might be useful for users who need to spend many hours in virtual reality or even for physically impaired users. Further, if the decision-making time can be lowered, perhaps more hand can be even faster than fewer hands. So altogether, our work suggests that we can maybe think of hands in virtual reality as more than just uh, virtual versions of our physical hands, and that such hand representations that differ from our own might be both useful and efficient. That's all for my talk. 
So thank you for your time and I'm happy to take any questions.